Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to today's SolidWorks sheet metal tutorial. Today we're going to try to complete this challenge, the through bracket, which comes from the Too Tall Toby playlist called Practice Models. I'll include a link down in the description in case you want to go and give this challenge a try and then maybe come back and watch this tutorial. Now today I'm going to do something a little bit special. I'm going to create this tutorial using SolidWorks, but then I'm going to create another tutorial using Onshape, but doing the exact same challenge model. And that way we can really get a nice side-by-side -side comparison of using sheet metal features in SolidWorks and using sheet metal features in Onshape. So let me know down in the comments if you see anything cool in this tutorial that you really enjoy. When you're done watching this one, be sure to check out the Onshape tutorial and let's get into it. Ow. All right, so we're gonna get into it here with this tutorial. As always, I encourage my students to challenge themselves to get faster and faster in the software. So I'm gonna start out by hitting play on the video so that we can start running our clock and see how long it takes us to model this part using SolidWorks Sheet Metal. Now, the first thing you wanna do before you actually jump into the software is kind of come up with a game plan. And I think that for this model, there's really two approaches. You could either start out by creating this shape here and extruding it as sheet metal, or start out by creating this shape over here and extruding it as sheet metal. And I think both of those techniques have merit. I've done some experimentation using both techniques and although they're pretty close, I think using this technique here is actually gonna yield better results, but it's pretty close. And I encourage you to kind of experiment with, with either of these techniques or maybe with your own uh, additional techniques. And so in the case of this model, the way that we're going to go through and create this model is we're going to start out by creating this shape. Really, we're only going to create it to this line here, to the 20 millimeter line. And then we're going to extrude that as half of the model. So looking at the isometric view here, that'll leave us with a sketch that looks like this. And we'll extrude it this way to create half of the model. Then we will follow up with this 45 degree angle flange and we're gonna have to cut that off. We can see here that, that that angled flange is at a height of 70 and this flange over here is at a height of 70 so it's supposed to rest kinda uh, at the same location up top. Then once we've got that geometry in place, we can start getting into creating this flange. We'll probably do that as one flange and then this flange here as a second feature. And then we can finish up by cutting this geometry away, adding our chamfer, adding a fillet up here in this corner and adding this hole. So that's the game plan. I think it's always good to come up with a game plan before you get started. And that way you can kind of follow that game plan, but pivot as needed when you run into challenges in the software. So now that we've got the game plan, let's get into SolidWorks here. We're gonna start out with a template using plain carbon steel in MMGS. That'll save us having to assign a material later. We're gonna go to the right plane, begin a sketch and create that first sketch using some auto dimensions. So this is gonna come down to a height of uh, 70 minus 30. So 40 millimeters down here. We're gonna come across here at a distance of 80 millimeters. And we're gonna come up here to a height of 20 millimeters. Now, as far as the location of the origin goes, I think for this model, it probably makes sense to just locate the origin right here. Uh, it might be in, you know, uh, enticing to create the origin maybe here at this corner or maybe even up here. But I think if you, re if you locate the origin here, you're going to set yourself up nicely to kind of center this flange later on and center this feature here and center this uh, tombstone shape that's up here. It's always good to look out for multiple features that are all located in one spot because that might help you to decide on where the origin should be located. So I'm going to use a 70 millimeter dimension to locate the top of our sketch and I'm going to use a 40 millimeter dimension to locate this side of the sketch. So let's add in those dimensions. We're going to add in here this uh, this height of 70 millimeters and we're going to add in this uh, location here to the side of 40 millimeters. And now from there, we're going to jump into the sheet metal command base flange tab and we're going to bring that out to a depth of 84 over 2 because we're just doing half of the model. So we're taking this 84 here and we're slicing it in half over two. So now what we need to do is look at the sheet metal parameters. This is supposed to have a five millimeter wall thickness and it's supposed to be five millimeters with a bend radius. So let's add in those fields over here. 
And then we're going to look at this thing from the side and we're just going to make sure that our material is going the correct direction. This is something that can really trip you up when you're working in sheet metal. So it's definitely something to look out for. We can see here that our 80 millimeter dimension that we captured is going from the outermost face to the outermost face. We can see that our 40 millimeter dimension, this um, 70 minus 30, this 40 millimeter dimension here is going from the outermost face of the sheet metal. So our material should be going to the inside of our sketch. And if you get that wrong, you know, the whole rest of the model is gonna be off. So we use this button here, reverse direction to make sure that that's going the correct direction. And now this feature is looking pretty darn good. Now at this point, I'm gonna be creating an edge flange. And so what I like to do is I like to go into my S key menu. And let me show you how you do this. You press the letter S and then you do a right mouse button and you choose customize. And if you're working a lot with sheet metal, it's definitely worth it to go in here and go to sheet metal and then add the sheet metal command. So your sheet metal, add the sheet metal command for edge flange because what that'll do for you is it'll set you up so that regardless of what menu you're on up top here, you can just pick this edge and then press S and jump right into the edge flange command. And that's really gonna save you a lot of time. Now, when it comes to this edge flange, um, the angle of this edge flange is supposed to be 45 degrees. The, the end location, the starting location of this edge flange is supposed to start exactly at the end of the, the tangency point or exactly at the end of that 20 millimeter dimension here on this flange. And we can control that using this option here, flange position. So down at the bottom of the edge flange command, you can see if I change that flange position, I get some different results. In this case, it's gonna be this third option here for the, uh, the bend outside. But we run into a little bit of a challenge when it comes to defining the height of this flange. See, the way the drawing is showing the height of this flange is that it's basically just supposed to come straight across from the top of the model. They're both supposed to be at 70 millimeters from the, from the base. And so, um, I don't know why I drew a two there. That was supposed to be a seven. And so I did some experimentation with some of these tools like go up to vertex, but none of them really uh, gave me the results that I wanted. And so I think the easiest solution for this is just gonna be to kind of overshoot this to some arbitrary value, let's say 60 millimeters, and then begin a new sketch here on this face and simply sketch a line starting at this point and coming straight across. Now you can take this line and give it a coincident relationship here to this edge. That way it'll always be fully constrained. It'll update dynamically if the, if the center flange gets wider or anything like that. But then from here, what you can do is an S key extrude cut. And again, I've, I've customized my S key menu to add the extrude cut feature to my sketching S key menu. And then you can do a right mouse button and say through all in both directions. Now there's a flip side to cut option here and you can see that I can flip this so it's going up or down. So I'm gonna flip this cut so it's going up. And that gets us pretty close to what we want. The problem is this should really be coming off at a perpendicular angle. Um, not only because of how it's shown in the drawing, but just because of the, the nature of sheet metal. It's gonna be coming off on a sheet. It's not gonna have this sharp here. And if you really wanted that sharp, it might be a, a very expensive cut to make in the blank. So what sheet metal has is a built-in feature whenever you do a cut called normal cut. And what this normal cut function does is it basically takes the cut and it makes it so that everything is 90 degrees to the sheet metal face. So all of those uh, leftover kind of sharp edges automatically adjust and become 90 degrees to the sheet metal uh, normal face. And so when we hit the green check mark here, you can see that uh, we have this beautiful result this is really exactly what we wanted. It's exactly horizontal here to the top of the model, and it's coming off here at 90 degrees from the normal face of the model. So I think that's a great opportunity to use normal cut, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about how the normal cut function works in SolidWorks Sheet Metal. All right, let's continue on here. I'm gonna pick this edge. I'm gonna press the S key. I'm gonna go into an edge flange command. Looks like the flange position is correct. So I can just jump right into edit flange profile. And we're gonna take this and just drag it over. You gotta take these and drag them over to get rid of that black. It starts out black here, but as soon as you drag it over, that vertical line becomes blue. And that means you can get in there and start adding some driving dimensions. So this is gonna be 18. This is gonna be 44. And the uh, height from the, or the, the location from the bottom of the model is gonna be 30 millimeters. So there we go. That gives us a new flange 
looking good, kind of bending down there. Let's pick this edge here, S key edge flange, bring this flange over. Let's look at this thing from the front. And that is not what we want. We really want this flange to be coplanar to the, uh, the bottom of the model here. So the material should really look more like this. And so to accomplish that, we will once again adjust the flange position. So here's the flange position options, and it looks like it's gonna be this very first option here. And now, once again, we can jump into edit flange position. Let's get normal to this sketch and let's start making some adjustments. So I'm gonna jump into the line command, begin a line, come back, touch the end point, come around and give myself a nice tombstone shape there. And then the circle command to give me a circle with a diameter of 20 millimeters. Now this is gonna have a dimension from the center of the part to the center of that hole at 170 over two. And look at that, it's just that easy to create that perfect edge flange there. All right, we're kind of winding down on the end of this model. Let's get normal to this face here, begin a sketch and create a tombstone shape. So here we go back, we touch the end point, we come up over and close that thing off. And then this is gonna have a vertical relationship to the origin. This uh, is gonna have a width of 15 millimeters and the location to the center of this slot from the very top of the model is going to be 50 millimeters. Now we can take that and we can do a cut extrude through all. And uh, this time, it doesn't really matter if you have a normal cut on or off. Usually when I'm doing a cut like this across a bend, I'll turn it off. But honestly, for this particular cut, it really doesn't matter. You'll get the same results either way. All right, time to continue with our game plan. We're going to add the chamfer here. So this chamfer is gonna be at 30 millimeters with a 30 degree angle. And I'll do a flip direction here to get it to, to match what's on the print. We're gonna add a fillet up here to this corner. So jump into the fillet command, that's gonna be 10 millimeters on this corner here. And then one final sketch. So we'll start a new sketch here. And this is gonna be a sketch of a circle with a 12 millimeter diameter. Make sure you don't accidentally pick up on the midpoint there because that's not supposed to be at the midpoint. It's supposed to be 10 millimeters down from that upper edge. So we'll do an extrude cut. That can just be linked to thickness to automatically match the wall thickness of the sheet metal. This looks awesome. We're gonna pick this face here, jump into a mirror command. It's gonna be a, not a mirror features or mirror faces, but a mirror bodies. So mirror bodies with the sheet metal. Get the check mark there and look at that thing. That looks awesome. Take a look in the flat pattern. Looks perfect. Take a look in the normal view. Oh yeah, that looks great. And we can just come right up here to our sensors and we can see that our sensors is telling us that our mass is 645 pounds. Nope, <laughs> 645 grams. So let's go back over to our drawing, our, our challenge video here. Let's stop the clock, 11 minutes and 28 seconds. Not bad, but not good either unless I got the mass correct. So let's take this all the way to the end and boom, there we go, Six. 45 grams and that is correct so let me know down in the comments what you thought about this tutorial did you learn anything new about sheet metal or about solidworks and of course be sure to check out my other video where i model this exact same challenge using on shape and if you enjoyed this video be sure to like be sure to subscribe and be sure to come back for some more tutal toby videos